another interesting miracle, uh, one that we all know what it's about, but a little different twist to it. So I just call it the miracle of the loaves and fishes. And uh, what I thought we would do, we're going to read there. Now, you know, there's, uh, I believe it's, I believe this is in every, in each of the gospels. And um, and so it, it's a little different story. Um, same story, but told a little differently. So we're going to read, we're going to read Matthew's version. Uh, now, before we start, let's go over the definition we have again. A miracle is an event that seems inexplicable by natural or scientific laws and then gets attributed to some supernatural cause. Okay. And of course, Dr. Lamsa says miracles and wonders, uh, they're all miracles, wonders, works are the same. Okay. They are simple and natural works of God. So this this um this scripture tonight, I think we'll be able to see this um see this with this meaning and and the natural works of God. All right. So we're gonna like, we're gonna do Matthew's version and we're gonna do uh, John's version. Okay. Let me check something here. Hold on just one minute. Bear with me. I'm letting people in. Okay, here we go. All right, and I want to make sure. Okay, so we're going to do Matthew's version first. When it was evening, his disciples came to him and said, this is a lonely place and it is getting late. Dismiss the people so that the men may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. What Jesus said to them, it is not necessary for them to go. Give them something to eat. They said to him, we have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said to them, bring them here to me. And he ordered the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. And he looked up to heaven and blessed them. And he broke them and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples placed them before the people. So they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up the fragments which were left over, 12 full baskets. And the men who ate were 5,000, not counting the women and children. Okay, now that's Matthew's version. John's is slightly different, but the same thing. Okay, John said, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a large crowd coming to him. And he said to Philip, where can we buy bread that all these may eat? He said this merely to test him, for he knew what he would do. Philip said to him, 200 pennies worth of bread would not be sufficient for them, even if each one should take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has with him five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for all of them? 
Jesus said to them, make all the men sit down. There was much grass in that place. So the men sat down, 5,000 in number. And Jesus took the bread and blessed it and distributed it to those who were sitting down. Likewise, the fish also, as much as they wanted. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the broken pieces which are left over so that nothing is lost. And they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with broken pieces, which were left over by those who ate from five barley loaves. Then the man who saw the miracle which Jesus performed said, truly this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Okay, now we all know the story, but Let's talk a little bit about the way that the ancient Near Eastern writers and scribes, um, the, 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 the way that they expressed themselves um, and the way that they told stories, always they exaggerated. Now, we don't, we don't like that in our, the way our society, because we want, we want, facts and we want to know yes 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 uh and down to the t and so this story with with you know since there's since there's um four different stories maybe five anyway um this okay this is an example of what we call amplification it's one of the seven keys okay and and so so scholars, <laughs> scholars forever have been trying to figure this out and, and have been debating, spending time on, well, was it 4,000? Was it 5,000? Uh, we're counting women, children. And, uh, but seriously, scholars have been considering that uh, uh, forever, okay. They didn't understand the Bible from the Aramaic translation, and they didn't understand the culture or their style of writing because it's simply amplification. And and it they just they used it. It makes for a much much better impressive story, don't you think? With talking about five thousand and four thousand, and who knows how many were there? But that's the way they write. That's that that's the way it is. And and then um, and, and once again, remember we said the stories, the, the stories, um, Dr. Lamsa puts it, the stories and the Bible are inspired by God, but the stories were spoken and written by men who had been inspired themselves or who had some experience with God. So that that's amplification. Now, uh, notice this. All right. These are the different versions. Notice that all of these different versions, no matter whether it was five loaves and two fish or seven loaves, whatever, they add up to seven. Seven is a biblical number. So how many fish did the, did the you know, did, did the... Uh, the young lad had in John, well, a few fish, some had two, but it doesn't, you know, but it doesn't matter. The idea was there was very little food there for all those people, regardless of the number. Now, so keeping that in mind, um, now, the miracle, of course, what the traditional miracle here is that Jesus multiplied the, the loaves and the fishes and miraculously did it. Once again, scholars, and if Martin were with us, he would tell you when he studied at the University of South Carolina, that they, for hours and hours, they, and they had all these different theories about where the bread came from. 
and they had them they had the disciples making bread in the uh, in a, in a cave somewhere and bringing it up but here is the key to the real meaning of of this story okay now when when people all right first of all they break baked the bread every day that was the staple of life all right and <clears throat> The bread, as you can see here, okay, looked like this. Um, and I don't know the exact measurements, but that particular loaf of bread would have been able to feed 40 people. So what they did, what they did, remember they traveled, they traveled on foot and they had to take their food with them. And so... So what they did, you see here in the middle, and yes, that's Dr. McCullough a very long time ago, but that's him. And what they did, they folded the bread. You notice it's flexible. They folded it, and that's what he did. And then you will notice he has it in his pocket. Well, what, what they did, okay, when they, when they traveled, all right, they had layers of clothing, and this is just a slight example here. Uh, the one here, the one on the on the the left here was just that. That's kind of like like kind of like an undergarment, but like if they were working or something, that's what they would have. But but then on top of that, you would always see the um, I'll just call it the belt, the girdle. That that what's going around them is the girdle, but. The point is they had layers of clothes and when they traveled, one of the layers of their clothes had pockets and those pockets were filled with bread and the fishes so that they had that when they could eat it. And because it was, because they had it in their clothes, it was hidden, all right? And, and traditionally, um, people did walk Okay, for the most part, and they they only had enough with them for their trip to and back. So, uh, so when we have when we have this occurring, okay, they had been they had been there. They had heard Jesus uh, speak and everything, and um, so they all had their food. To return home, and uh, and of course, uh, they they needed it to go to go home, um, and and so it, and it, you know they're just very private about it, and you couldn't see what they had. So, given that, we have what I call the real miracle here. And the real miracle was that they shared, okay? Those who had only enough food for their return home and would not normally share their food, okay, they shared. Now, okay, I know that, that, I know that we've once again uh, taken away from the miracle that Jesus could have done that and everything, but, but we haven't said it's not a miracle. Because um, if we go back to the to the definition of, of the miracles, uh, essentially, um, essentially, God was totally a part of this. Okay, this is an, an unusual happening. With you know when they, they attribute it to supernatural, well, well, sure, uh, it was supernatural. Now, because. We learned with the healing and everything, God, God doesn't do things for us, but he does things through us. And when, when, when God, I mean, God always does things. Uh, um, you know, uh, Martin used to say, well, he got, he was God's agent because he was always being called upon to give money to his his niece and all that kind of stuff and uh but but that's true god works through us 
So those people had been listening to Jesus, Jesus teachings now about the kingdom, about love your neighbor. Okay. Love God, love your neighbor. And probably put in there uh, the idea about um, um, uh, being, feeding, feeding the hungry, the, the thirsty. And so all I'm saying is they must, they were truly inspired and Jesus didn't really have to tell them to, to share because that's what they had been preaching. So that is the miracle based on, well, it's the Aramaic approach, but, but based on the culture. And um, like I say, it, it is a miracle that the people shared, but it was because of Jesus' teaching and his inspiration. Okay. <clears throat>